Hello and welcome to another video by Creek Home Woodworking. Today I'm going to be showing you a video on making a single cylinder pen and the cylinder will be made out of epoxy resin. I'm showing you two others as well because I'm going to be doing it as a mass production. So the first pen on the left is going to be made out of zebra wood which has a very beautiful grain once completed. The middle one it's called Chen Chen, and it also has a very nice wood grain. It's much tighter packed though, but it looks really great once it's all completed. The one on the right is simulated coral. So once it's done, it's going to have a very beautiful blue luster to it. I'm not going to go into too much details on how everything's done today, because if you've already seen my first video, you've seen the majority of the process. A lot of this is going to be just high speed movement and then some music. One of the things that you'll see here is that with this, it takes a lot more time and patience to be able to work with the epoxy resin. And that's just because it's a much harder material than most of the woods I work with. So it takes a lot more time and patience. Now, while I was doing this first pen blank, I realized that I hadn't secured it properly. And so it started to spin in the vise. So then what it ended up doing in the long run is it made Instead of a nice, perfect hole right through the middle, it made it a big oval. And you'll see it when I show it up here in a second. With an oval, there isn't really much I can do with that right away. I'd have to get some epoxies and I'd have to fill in the hole and then I'd have to cast it that way. So once I pull this out, you'll see it's not a nice circular hole, but more of an oval shaped hole. One thing that I typically like to do is when I set up my vise, I try to set it up so that there's minimal clearances and everything is set just right. Well, in this particular case, it was too just right, and I couldn't get my wood blanks to fit in there after doing the epoxy cylinder. And it took me a couple of tries to figure this out. So I had to go off and trim down my pieces. So a few minutes later, I came back and this time, since I saw how bad the hole was in here, I decided that that one would not be worked on today. And I got the other end of that rod. The nice thing is, is they come in about six inch lengths. So this particular rod, I just cut it completely in half. So I could just use the opposite end. What I did at the same time is I also made sure that I trimmed down the other two blanks and made sure that one was the right length. And I moved forward with drilling out the holes in all three pieces. For a few minutes here, we're just gonna let the music play and you can watch me work.
back over at the table. I'm going to check and make sure that my holes are large enough for the brass cylinders, making sure that they slide through nice and easy, that they're not going to be a tight fit. Once that's done, I get it sandpaper and we're going to sand down all the outsides of the brass cylinders. Again, we got to do this to make sure that we get a nice good bond between the wood or the acrylic materials and the super glue itself. Without that, it's just going to be too smooth of a surface and you'll eventually lose adhesion. During this, I just want to make sure that I have a nice even amount of glue on the on the brass cylinder. When I put it in the epoxy resin tube, or when I put it in the wood blanks as well, I want to make sure that I'm twisting it and spinning it as I'm putting it in. Just making sure that the super glue spreads nice and evenly on all the surfaces in there. Back over at the drill press, the milling bit mixed with the epoxy resin makes a nice big mess. When milling down regular woods, it's nowhere near as bad. There's nowhere near as much of a crazy flaky mess as, as what the acrylic does. By the time this one's done, there'll be this blue stuff all over the floor, all over the drill and it's just one big mess. But when the acrylics are done properly, they just pop. The way they look, the figures that come out of them, the designs, they just look amazing. So sometimes being a little bit messy is definitely worth the end results here. After finishing the epoxy one, I go onto the two wood blanks and they go as any other wood blanks will go. They end up getting flattened, nice and neat, very little fuss or muss. I'm just going to get myself set up on the lathe and start turning the single cylinder. One thing that I've noticed while doing these is that the acrylics I have to be a lot more careful and a lot slower on. First off, they tend to be a lot harder on the tools. They dull the tools a lot quicker and they're also much easier to break while they're being turned. If I go too fast, if I push too hard, they tend to chip apart and then it's a wasted material. And I've learned it the hard way by seeing several of these things just blow apart on me right in the middle of a project. Now, when I start off with this, I like to start off with a square gouge. That helps take off a little bit more material than a rounded gouge. And it, it typically goes a little bit faster and easier for me. I'll do that once I'm down to a nice, perfect 
cylinder. And then I use a rounded tip or rounded gouge to smooth out everything and to do the final finishing. The rounded gouge is what you use to make sure that everything is nice and flush with the two black bearings that are on either end of the cylinder. Another difference between the square head and the rounded head is that the square head will typically take off little chips, little fine chips and pieces like that. Whereas the rounded head will take off little strings and they can just stay on the cylinder as I'm turning or they'll go flying off, they'll go flying up. But in this particular case, majority of it's just gonna stay right on the cylinder and spin with me. So every now and then I need to stop and clear it off. I'm going to stop talking now and I'm just going to let the work continue and let you guys enjoy the music and enjoy the process. For this last section of work on the lathe, what I'm going to be doing is using various sandpapers and micro mesh to really smooth this cylinder out and give it its final shine. I start off with 150 grit sandpaper and work my way all the way up through the different grits of sandpaper up to 800 grit. And then I do a nice buffing polish to help try to get rid of those last few little scuffs that are left behind with the sandpaper. And then after the buffing polish, I'm going to wet sand this using grits 1,500 to 12,000 micro mesh pads. The reason why I do wet sanding is because it makes cleaning the pads really easy so I can reuse them again and again. And I find that it's still a softer polish once everything is said and done, giving a beautiful shine, especially when it comes to the acrylics. <laughs>
while using the micro mesh to wet sand the cylinder, I discovered that the glue did not adhere properly to the brass cylinder. So I had to stop what I was doing, go back, put some more glue on it after sanding off that brass cylinder again, and start over. But I'm not going to make you wait for all that. I just cut that whole part out and keep on trucking. And here we are at the final assembly. Now, as you can see, I'm just using a very basic vise to squeeze the parts together that need to be squeezed together. And I just find it's a really simple tool to work with. There are vices out there that you can get, and I will be getting a special device for this probably in the next couple months. But in the meantime, I'm perfectly happy using this. As with any assembly project, you just got to make sure that you take your time, that you don't rush things, and that you make sure you follow the instructions. Once you do that, you can come out with an exceptionally made pen or whatever other project you might be working on. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching the video today. And if you did, please click on the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't, and set yourself up for notifications as well. Once again, thanks for watching the video. And I hope you have yourself a great day.